Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning. And hello. Well, it's good morning here. Of course, I have to acknowledge that it might be your afternoon or your evening. But welcome. I'm glad you're all here today. Uh, you'll notice in the chat room, I did share the class notes with you. So you can open that link. Oh, hello, Cha. Good morning, good morning, or afternoon, or evening, or sometime in between. If you open that link to the class notes, I'll paste it one more time in case you didn't see it. You can open that, follow the class notes. Of course, if you're watching this video later, uh, you'll have to search for that link, but I always try to include some class notes with every class I teach. Hello, Tahir. Good morning, or probably good afternoon where you are. Maybe even good evening. Mala, welcome. I'm glad everybody's here. A lot of people joining us. I know, it's been a long time since I saw you, Mala. Been too long. Hello to Dave as well. It's good to see everybody here this morning. I've got my coffee, so I'm ready to go. Why don't we go ahead and get started? Why not? I'm ready. Hopefully you're ready too. Okay. As you know, you've probably seen this tens of times. I always start off with the same thing with the links. Uh, for those of you who are new, you can follow these links. If you have more questions about these classes, you can always contact Zach. And here is Zach's email. Uh, we, you can follow one of these links to see more information about the live classes. Uh, you can read what it means to be to have a subscription and be a subscribing student. You do get more work and a certificate at the end for your work. So you can look into that. It is a paid subscription. So consider whether you can afford a month of, of work because we will give you homework and quizzes. And we have different levels. Uh, I teach the upper intermediate English. Josh teaches the academic English, which would be a higher level English. Then we have Mark with intermediate and Nicole with pre-intermediate. So if you ever watch any of these videos, if you ever watch any of the teachers and it doesn't feel right, it's either too easy or too difficult, you might want to consider searching for uh, another teacher's videos and see if those are better. Oh, I got some hellos to go through. Hello, Gerardo. Hello, Gabriella. <laughs> Hello, Marcos. Hello, oh boy, uh, Asta. Am I saying that correctly? Hello, Asta. Hello, Leanne. Uh, advanced English. Yeah, I would say maybe Josh's class here, English for academic purposes, would be our advanced English class. I would say it's the most difficult class. So you might want to watch for Josh's videos. And I'm trying to think when he teaches. It's in the afternoons, my afternoon. So it's after I teach. I believe it's around one o'clock. If I'm so, uh, so look for it, look for it. Look at the YouTube page. The YouTube page will have the correct times. Look for one of these teachers and see. Oh, good. As the, I'm glad I almost got your uh, name right. Uh, look for one of these teachers. If you're looking for a more advanced class, that would be Josh's class. And of course, for those of you who stumble across these videos later, I am talking to students from around the world who are here live. If you watch one of these streaming videos live, you can chat in the chat room and I can see everything you write. I can see your questions and your responses and your emojis. If you can't join us live, oh, you can always watch the videos later, right? And then one last link that I like to share is our Facebook page, which is Learn English on Facebook. And it's where you can take little quizzes and you can discuss 
uh, some of the answers and we will post when we will have videos upcoming. So yeah, look for those as well. Look for this page, the Facebook page. Okay. So we do offer some resources and if you're not a subscriber, of course, these resources are free, but they're limited to these, uh, just watching these videos, basically. There's no, you don't get the curriculum and the homework. Okay, enough about the links, more vocabulary today. Today we're gonna be talking about vocabulary related to the internet, vocabulary related to our, the internet. Our theme today is the internet. Uh, last time I talked about vocabulary concerning politics. Now let's, let's look at vocabulary related to the internet. You'll notice uh, the way I present and the order I present these words will be a little out of order, actually a lot out of order. Uh, it'll be different from the list I gave you. So just follow along with me and you can look for those words later in the list and I'll try to get to as many as possible. Okay, ready? Here we go. First word, abandon, and abandon is a verb as you can see. And here's the example sentence. The house was so damaged by the storm that the family was forced to abandon it. The family was forced to abandon it. And if you look at that picture, that picture does show an abandoned, and I'm using the adjective form here, an abandoned house. Nobody lives there anymore. The house is going to ruin. The house is falling apart, abandoned. Hello, Selma. We're covering vocabulary related to the internet today. And this is our first word. You haven't missed anything. This is our first word, abandon, abandon. And you see an abandoned house in the background. Now, how is this related to the internet? Well, a website can be abandoned. If somebody creates a page and they don't post anything new, they don't update it, they just let it sit there, it becomes abandoned. It still exists, but nobody's really maintaining that page. And that probably means very few people are going to that page or landing on that page. And there's a lot of them on the internet now. A lot of the inter internet uh, pages have been abandoned, but they still exist. Hi, Villanoa. Uh, we are talking about vocabulary. Yeah, it's a hi, Dealey. Everybody who's joining, you're okay. This is our first word, our first word. Yeah, give up, leave behind, uh, move out, uh, don't take care of, you abandon it, you abandon it. Yeah, left behind, abandon. Okay, let's look at the next word. Accessible, accessible, an adjective, accessible. So I'm giving this double C here, I'm giving it kind of an X, sound accessible it's an adjective i am worried that everything we use on the internet will not always be accessible like it is today so i think what this writer of this sentence was worried about is net neutrality where um, a company could charge for access to different websites or access to websites that might uh, require um, more broadband, uh, larger internet width, broadband width. So people are afraid of uh, access being limited in the, in the future by internet providing companies. That's what it means by accessible. Right now, uh, the people uh, in America want net neutrality where you pay one price for your internet service and you can access all of the internet. Uh, why not? Doesn't, any, doesn't everybody want that? So we want the internet to remain accessible. Accessible. Yeah, uh, so before this one, abandon is the verb. If you put an ed, you can make an adjective, abandon. Accessible, and I shorten this, 
uh, to access, to just access. So access is the verb, and we're looking at the adjective here, accessible, accessible. Let's see, Vivek, you have an example sentence. Smart English is not accessible for non-premium students for homeworks. Good, Vivek. Always good. You guys come up with the best example sentences. Always. I'm going to put that one in the class notes if I can find in our, in our list accessible. Accessible. Looking, 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 looking. There it is, all the way at the bottom. I'm going to add that as an example because that's a good example sentence. Yeah, non-subscribing students don't get full access. It's not fully accessible. OK. There we go. That's good. Available, accessible. And then there were a couple for abandon. I'm going to include those. There are a couple synonyms. Quits, left, left behind. Yeah, that's good synonyms for abandon. Available, accessible, yeah, we can think of that as a synonym. That's good. Good, Milena. Milena. Uh, available is a good synonym for accessible. And Lucas, you have an example too. Facebook isn't accessible in Europe. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's a good example sentence. So I'll put that in there. Okay. Let's go back to the presentation to the next word. Next word is accurate, accurate. Notice in this word, I pronounce the two C's like an X, accessible. And here it gets a K sound, accurate, accurate. So don't get those pronunciations confused. So this one's accurate, another adjective. That data is old and not very accurate anymore. Accurate is exact. Uh, accurate is correct. Accurate is um, defining. Uh, accurate is, is good, it's dependable. So we always give positive meanings to accurate. Accurate. So that's accurate. Let's go on to the next word. And of course, you can always ask questions in the chat room as we go along. And let me know if I'm going too fast or too slow. The next word is aspect. It's a noun. Email is one aspect of how the internet has changed the world. So aspect is like part, uh, factor, um, detail. Uh, email is just one aspect of many. There are many aspects of how the internet has changed the world. Email is one example. So, oh good, ch, that's a good synonym for accurate. Precise, precise, I'll put that in the class notes. Let me find accurate, accurate. Going through the list of words, good, precise. Good, Vivek. Smart classes is just one aspect of my improvement. There can be many aspects for English improvement, but learning English on Smart is just one aspect. Maybe reading, speaking, practicing, studying. All of these can be different aspects. Just one part, one detail, one example. Dimension, yeah, we can say dimension for aspect one dimension. We can use that as a synonym, of course. Evidence, yeah, we could use evidence. Example, part, piece, facet, good. Detail, August. Welcome, you're not that late. We're on our, what, fourth word? We're just on our fourth word. Hi, Rabbi. 
Hello everyone. If you are joining just now, that's okay. Uh, we, we're not getting very far. I never go very fast. When we do vocabulary, I'll, I'll probably never get to all the vocabulary, but we'll go slow. We'll go slow. Okay, next word, attendee, attendee. There were not many attendees at the meeting. And of course, it's a noun, and you can see attendee are people who go to a meeting, a conference, a class, a symposium. Uh, it can even be a parade, a celebration. How many people were there? How many people were there? You've probably heard the word, if you've been to school, you've probably heard the word attendance, meaning to be there, to be present. Attendee is one person. We can count one person as an attendee. Of course, we can make it plural and say attendees. There were not many attendees at the meeting. Yeah, participants. Excellent. Excellent synonym. Let's go with that. Participants. Participants. And these, what I'm typing here are our class notes for this session. For those of you who are just joining, I will add the class notes. So you can f open that link and follow along as we go along. And I'll jump between the presentation and the class notes. Okay, let's get back to the presentation loading. Okay, next word, ban, ban. It's both a noun and a verb. Websites like YouTube are banned in some countries. And here you see it being used as a verb. Uh, actually, let's call that maybe an adjective. Uh, are banned, are banned. So they've taken the, the ban, they turn, turned it into the verb form with the ed ending, but it's after the be verb, are banned. So it's passive, it's passive. Here it's being used as a passive, okay, it's still a verb, it's a passive verb. Websites like YouTube are banned in some countries. Yeah, that's true. Uh, some countries do ban websites, meaning you cannot look at them. You cannot see them. They are illegal. They are blocked from view. Good. Prohibit. Vivek, you're, you're counting the people. Only 41 people are attending for today's class. So we have 41 attendees today. Attendees today. Okay, and we just talked about ban, and ch came up with prohibit. Prohibit. That's a good synonym. Prohibit. Forbidden. Can't access. And Vivek, you have a example sentence. YouTube is banned in Pakistan. And I'll capitalize the name of that country. YouTube. Oh, good. There's another synonym. Good, Mr. Singh. Taboo. Yeah, so you get the idea of ban, ban. You can't see it. You can't access it. You can't look at it. Ban. Oh, uh, it's used as a noun as well. I kind of want to show you that too. Uh, there is a ban on, um, you, uh, how about this? There's a ban on black market websites in America. There is, and here I'm using it as a noun, there is a ban on black market websites in America. And when you use it as a noun, it is countable, so you'll need an article like the, a, uh, or a uh, before it, because ban is countable. Okay. Let's go on to next. Bar. This is a verb, very much like ban. As you can see, this guy's got his hand up. He's, it's all, he's all up in our, uh, there we go that way. He's all up in our grill. He's all up in our grill, meaning he's in our face. He's in our face. Bar, verb. 
the man was barred from entering the store for life. So it's like ban. It's like ban. Uh, it's like prohibit, uh, block. Uh, so it's much. You can use it much like ban. But this one, it's only going to be a verb. And here. They're using the passive verb form again. The man was barred from entering the store for life. He was blocked, prevents, he was prevented. Good, Selma. Bar we can think of as prevents, stop. Okay, good. So far, so good. Oop. Next, basis, noun. I check my email on an hourly basis on an hourly basis. Boy, this one's going to be hard to uh, <laughs> this one's going to be hard to explain. Basis, uh, base, foundation, um, re uh, regular obviously on an hourly basis. Um, pattern. Okay. We've got some more going back to the last one. We've got some examples for it. I'll put those in for Bard. The number you dialing is Bard. It's blocked. Set a wall. Good, Bar. How are we doing on, on basis? I didn't do a very good job of, of explaining that. I check my email on an hourly basis. When we have a time word like hourly, we often use basis with it. I, um, I take a shower on a daily basis. Um, what else can we say? I read on a nightly basis. Okay, good, August, you have, yeah, procedure, Selma, that might be a good synonym. I actually like that synonym, procedure. So let's look for basis, B-A-S-I-S, -S, basis. Uh, procedure, frequency is also good. We have another one, lessons are delivered on a monthly basis. So we can think of it as procedure or frequency. You guys are better at thinking of synonyms than I am. That's good. Basis, basis. And it is often used with like a time adverb, a time adverb. I can say I teach on a weekly basis. I teach these classes two times a week. I would guess I would call that a weekly basis. I go to the dentist on a yearly basis. Great. Okay, you guys are coming up with good examples. Makes me feel better about your understanding of basis. Maybe I don't have to explain it so much. Kind of a weird word, but actually very useful, actually very useful. And I do like that, I like that synonym frequency. Notice all these time adverbs before it. How often something is done, basis, basis. Okay, good, let's go back. Uh, next we have biased, biased. It's an adjective. The person that made the decision was clearly biased. So it looks like she's kicking him out. She's got a bias against him. Bias is when you use your own opinion and feeling to make a decision. You are biased. Uh, sometimes uh, do, okay, we got a question here, Steve. Does it need an A before monthly? Yeah, on a daily basis, on a yearly basis. Basis is countable, so we would use the article A before uh, the... Actually, I called these adverbs. I'm wrong, aren't I? They're being used as adjectives. Because here we have article, and then basis is a noun. 
So these would be adjectives, but they have that ly ending, but they are adjectives. I had to take a second to think about that. So yes, article, a, uh, adjective, that'll look like an adverb with that ly ending, and then the noun basis. Good, you're already thinking of, before we even talk about it, you're thinking of synonyms for biased. Yeah, unfair, uh, prejudiced, good. What else do you have? Base, yeah, one-sided. Good, August. Partial, good, as the subjective, good. These are great. Yeah, we have prejudiced. Uh, a couple students thought of prejudiced. Uh, all good synonyms, all good synonyms. Biased, biased. Of course, it's hard not to make a decision based on our bias. We are all kind of biased. We're all a little biased. Ch, you thought of uh, another sentence for basis. I study English on a daily basis. Good, you should always study a language on a daily basis. It's easy to lose that information in your head unless you study every day. Okay, let's go back. Okay, it looks like you understand biased. Yeah, prejudice, uh, partial, unfair. You're using your feeling or your opinion to make a decision. Obviously, she's using her feeling against him to, it looks like she's kicking him out. She's kicking him out. Okay, let's look at the next one. Campaign, campaign, noun or verb. The company's new campaign about its new line of cell phones is quite aggressive. Uh, on Monday, we covered some political words and campaign was in there. This is a different campaign. This is an advertisement campaign. And of course, you'll see something like the Samsung Galaxy or the Apple iPhone. Uh, they have campaigns, they have advertising campaigns. You'll see them in print, in magazines. You'll see them in commercials, on TV. You'll see billboards outside in the city. You'll see ads online, you'll see banner ads online. So you'll see advertisements anywhere. This is called an ad campaign. And anytime a new product is rolled out, a new product is ready for consumers to buy, you'll see a very aggressive, a very strong ad campaign. They're really trying to sell the product, trying to get people to know about the product. Okay, so let's go back. Yeah, let's just think of it as advertisement, advertisement. Campaign, advertisement, that's good. Uh, I saw another one for biased here. The more synonyms, the merrier, inclines. Good, advertisement, spreading the word. Good, uh, we talked about publicity before, and now we're talking about publicity again. So now I have to find the word campaign, there it is. So we have advertisement. What else do we have? Spreading the words. Good phrase to define it. Publicity. So you get the idea. Uh, it is a series of ads, many advertisements. A lot of publicity, getting people to know. Good announcement, that's also good. Okay, let's go to the next one, censor. Censor. Information is censored by governments in many different ways, and it is a verb. Uh, censor is to block something, to make it, again, forbidden, taboo, to ban it, to bar it. Uh, a censor is a verb. It's also a noun. Uh, I don't have it listed as a noun here, but a person can be a censor. A person can be the one who censors something. And censor is a little different than bar and ban because censorship often includes edits. Uh, like, it may be the same thing. You may be able to look at the website, but certain things are taken out. Certain words are taken out. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to have problems with your na name. Uh, uh, Kunyat? Is that even close, Kunyat? Uh, Boulderization, good. That's, that's a huge word. That's a huge word. 
So let's look for our sensor here, and I'll put some of these synonyms you're thinking of. Uh, let's see, where is censorship? There it is, or just censor. So we have limited, limited. And we also have boulderization. Whew, that's a big word. Let's just call that a synonym for censor. Regulate. What else? We blocked. Of course, before you do any of this, you have to examine it. Inspect. Ordered. Filtered. Uh, it's a little more active involvement than barring something or banning something. Uh, it will be. It will include edits. I'll say. Also, edit. Then we had another one for maybe we had one more for campaign. We also had it. announcement. Oh, good. I'm glad this is working for you. Overhaul. Yes, overhaul. That's good, too. Uh, change. Change in some way, right? When you censor something, you change it in some way. So overhaul. We can say change. Change for a purpose. You have a specific purpose. Um, often, I guess in America, I, especially me, I'll speak for myself. I don't think to censor something is a good idea. Uh, I would rather something be offensive. I would rather not like something than to have it censored. Uh, I think censorship, and I'll put that form of the word too. The noun form is actually censorship. Uh, a person is a censor. So if a, pers if a person who does it, we say the same word, censor. Uh, I think censorship is a bad thing. I don't think anything should be censored. Yeah, good, control. It's often used for control. OK, let's look at the next word. Circulation, a noun. The circulation of newspapers and magazines has declined in recent years. So circulation is how many areas, regions, houses, people it gets to. And we use it for newspapers and magazines, uh, things that need to be moved, I guess, in the real world. I don't know if we would use it for the internet. Circulation, yeah, I guess we could, circulation over the internet. Uh, of course, circulation works differently on the internet because people have to access it them, themselves. They don't wait for a delivery person. So we can think of it as delivery um, area covered. Good, addition, moving around, usually of information. When we're using this form of circulation, we're using information. Uh, let's see, version, good. Distribution is a great one. Uh, really good synonym is distribution. See, we have a couple more for sensor. Wow, look how many synonyms we have for sensor. That's crazy, that's crazy. And these are all aspects. These are all aspects of the word sensor. And we have a use of the noun form, so I'll include that as a sentence. Censorship is a way of hiding the truth. Yes, many times it is. Okay, Milena, you brought up blood circulation. You, you beat me to it. I was about to talk about blood circulation. A good way to think of this is, um, and let's put it as an example sentence. It is important to have good blood circulation. Of course, blood circulation is the way blood moves through the heart and the vessels, the blood vessels, the veins, the arteries. So all throughout your body, 
the blood going from your heart to the tips of your fingers, the tips of your toes, the tip of your head, back to the heart. This is circulation. This is circulation. It's where the word comes from. And we use it for news information now. But it does come from that blood circulation. And you guys have some good, more good examples, which I'll include in here. Circulation. And you might hear the word circle in there. So you might hear the word circle. Of course, circulation means to return. So I don't really know, but when we use it for news or the internet or something like that, it's not really a circle. I guess now in today's age with social media, we can think of it as a circle. We can use social media to report, and we can also use social media to learn, to learn news and information. And we can also contribute content. We can create news and information. So I think uh, social networking and the internet has allowed us to become part of the circulation, and now it's a true circle again. I think it's a good, good age and day we live in, actually. Good dis movement, dissemination. Dissemination is a good is a big word, but it's a good word. It's a good synonym for circulation. You guys must have good thesauruses. You guys must have you you have good thesauruses. Good spread flow. Good, a lot of excellent synonyms here for circulation. Gyration? Mm. August, I like spread and flow. Gyration is just kind of moving around, almost like a dance. Gyration. I think motion, yeah, gyration. One-to-one uh, -one circulation. One-to-one -one circulation would be a closed loop or just two, two people talking, of course. Uh, let's move on. Um, can we learn family of words of the particular word in order? Oh, like word families, like word forms? Um, sure, I can, I can give more word forms. August, if this is what you mean, I can give more word forms in the notes, like circulate. Yeah, world, gyration, motion. I think these are more to do with body movement. Circulation is not so much body movement or uh, internet circulation is not even uh, a movement of physical media like the news. Okay, let's go on. I'm ready. I'm ready for the next word already. Competitive as an adjective, competitive. She is very competitive. She just loves to win. I think this one's easy to understand. Uh, Let's find it on our class notes. And if I give you the other word forms, I think it becomes pretty apparent what it means competitive. So some other word forms, compete, competitor. Okay, so competitive, compete, competitor, somebody who competes in a competition. Now I have to spell competition. Okay, I think I got it right. Uh, yeah, you know, somebody wants to win above other people. Uh, competitive is often ambitious. Yes. Uh, a competitive person always wants to win. Aggressive. Yeah, we can think of competitive as being aggressive if you want to win. Okay, that one that one's easier to understand, I think. Let's go to maybe a more difficult one. Compulsive as an adjective. Compulsive. You are such a compulsive gambler, I think you have a problem. And in the background you see poker chips and 
somebody's hand. They're playing cards, obviously. I see a little bit of cards there. If you're a compulsive gambler, you can't stop. You can't stop. You have the feeling that you must do it. There's no end to it. Okay, we got more more com competitive ones coming in. Uh, motivated is good. Athletes, that's right, Cha. Athletes are always competitive. Athletes are always competitive. It's part of their nature to be competitive. Boys tend to be more competitive than girls. I think, uh, boy, maybe that was true in the past, but. Today, at least in America, we do have a lot of female athletes. And you may know of our uh, USA women's soccer team uh, who won. They won uh, the championship. They won uh, their, is it called the World Cup in, in soccer? They won the World Cup. Uh, I think a lot of female athletes tend to be extremely competitive. But I guess growing up, I guess boys are more encouraged to be competitive. But I think anybody can be competitive if they want something. And of course, since that's a comparison, we're going to need more competitive. And Vivek, you had the sentence. Oh, let's bring that back. Your sentence is, Selma is competitive to me. If we want to use it as a comparative, we're going to need the word more. Selma is more competitive than me, than me. Okay, compulsive. Let's get to compulsive, the last word we, we talked about. Compulsive, obligatory, yes you feel obliged to do it. Rash? Maybe. Yeah. Um, compelling. Compulsive. Addictive. Yes. Compulsive can also be aggressive. Enthusiastic? I don't know about enthusiastic. Um, compulsive you can't control. Compulsive you can't control. Um, sometimes we call people a compulsive liar. Um, my cousin is a compulsive liar. They don't know why they tell lies, they just do. I should make that bigger in the background. They don't know why they tell lies, they just feel like they must. We call them compulsive liars. Uh, compulsive. Yeah. There's an adjective form, compulsively. Yeah, un good, uncontrollable, that's a good one. Rabbi, that's a good one. We can think of it as uncontrollable, uncontrollable. Harmful, obsessive, can't get enough of, good. Yes, Selma, that's right. There are people who have OCD. There are people who have OCDs. If you haven't heard of this condition before, it means obsessive compulsive disorder. And an example of this would be someone who has to wash their hands all the time. They feel they have to wash their hands, even when their hands aren't dirty. They have to wash their hands, and sometimes they rub their skin so much you'll see their hands are very red. We call it OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. They can't stop doing something. Yes, often it is unintentional. Sometimes the person is not always aware that they're doing it. It's compulsive. Yes, captivating, good. <laughs> And August, I'll just use one in that lo long list. Uh, how about irresistible? Okay, good. Good, I think we understand compulsive. What's next? Congress. Oh, we're back to politics. 
Congress, of course, they make many decisions about the internet, in, in America at least. This is a noun. In America, the part of the government that decides new laws is called the Congress. The Congress makes the new laws, and they are in Washington, D.C. They are in our capital. And if something, uh, if something concerns the internet, uh, even though the internet is usually a privatized, uh, is controlled by privatized companies, Congress makes the laws uh, concerning the internet. Uh, okay, that's a good example sentence. Let's go back to our last word, compulsive, for a second. A child's ability to play is limited by these compulsive behaviors, meaning the child has problems playing because of compulsive behavior. Yeah, I guess for Congress, a, a Congress is a meeting. You can call any meeting generally a Congress. However, in America, it is a very specific building and group of people to make decisions. So I think you understand that one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on from that one to consumer, which is a noun. Many consumers do not trust TV advertising and now depend on word of mouth. Okay, word of mouth. What does that mean? Word of mouth. Let me find consumer here. Oh, must be down below. Word of mouth. Word of mouth. Okay, there we go. Okay, in this, we have this word of mouth. Word of mouth is one consumer tells another consumer about the quality of a product. Word of mouth. Yes, good, verbal publicity. Excellent, Asta, that's excellent. We can think of it as verbal publicity. Client, user, good. Yeah, and we can think of it as, we can think of consumer. Uh, youngs, we would probably call them just young people. Uh, like consuming more YouTube than TV. And we can use it for the internet like that. You can consume different websites on the internet. Yeah, young people like consuming more YouTube than TV. That is certainly true. Yeah, those are all good. Okay, I'm gonna maybe speed up a little bit because we are running out of time. Try to get to some words before we run out of time. Content, noun. The content of the website is quite interesting. It's just the actual information, pictures, words that are on it. Content, content, words and pictures. The stuff, the material that is on a website, that's the content. Counseling, noun, many life problems can be treated by counseling. Of course, many people need counseling for internet addiction. There is such a thing as internet addiction where people use, consume, consumers consume too much of the internet and they need counseling with a, a professional counselor to help them get rid of this addiction. They become very compulsive and they can't stop looking or surfing or clicking to different websites. And that's when they need counseling. Critical. Adjective. The newspaper was very critical of the new film. Critical. Uh, you say maybe a negative opinion. Now, being a critic or being critical doesn't necessarily mean you're negative, but often it carries that idea that it's more negative than positive. 
you look at the good and the bad and you weigh them and see what is more. You become critical. You look very closely at something. Okay. Uh, I'm going to continue to go fast here to try to get through some of these words. Debate, noun and verb. Many people have been debating whether the freedom to access anything they want on the internet is actually a good thing or not. Debate is like an argument where everybody's allowed to say their side of something, say their opinion on something, and maybe they have different opinions. Often in a debate they do have different opinions, and everybody gets a turn expressing or saying their different opinions. Debate. And I still see some good synonyms coming in. I'm going to hold off. I'm going to hold off adding those to the class notes to get through some of these words. But of course, you can keep typing in those examples. They are helping the other people in the chat room right now. Decline, noun and verb. Sales of newspapers and books have declined in recent years. Decline, go down, go down, trend down. Uh, not improve, not go up, not become more, become less, decline, get smaller, decline. Sales of newspapers and books have declined. Print media sales have declined. They've gone down because of the internet. You can get so much information, so much media on the internet. Good. Reduce, turn down, reject. Yeah, as a, that's a different meaning of decline, but can also mean reject. Decrease, good, you understand decline. Denounce as a verb. Google has denounced web censorship. Denounce, um, denounce is to speak against, uh, to say the opposite, to say something is false. To say something is wrong, you denounce it. Uh, you've probably heard announce or pronounce. Well, this is denounce as a verb, and it's to speak against, to say something is false, to say something is wrong, to reject something. Uh, yeah, to say no, to decline something, to criticize something as being incorrect. You denounce it. You denounce it. Google has denounced web censorship. They don't believe in web censorship. Condemn. Good. Denounce. Diary. Noun. Blogs are often written as online diaries of people's lives. A diary is a daily journal, a daily account, a daily reporting of what someone did in their day. It's a personal report. It's a personal report, usually kept on a daily basis. I keep a diary on a daily basis. See how I brought that around to an older word? Diary, diary. Many blogs online are diaries. Disorder, noun. Many mental disorders can be treated successfully by doctors. Uh, also going through counseling, you can help get rid of a disorder. You can get treatment for your disorder. A disorder is usually mental and not physical. Uh, something is wrong in the brain chemistry where it's not functioning quite right. Uh, we consider these disorders. Uh, so mental disorders can be treated successfully by doctors, usually through pills. There's a lot of pharmaceuticals. There's a lot of medicine out there that can help disorders. But sometimes going to counseling and just talking about it can also help get rid of the disorder. And of course, internet addiction is a new disorder among, usually among younger people. Disprove, disprove, verb. The story was disproved thanks to a journalist's hard work. Disprove, to show that it was incorrect, to show that it was false, to prove that it was wrong. 
you give different proof. You give proof that goes against proof. The story was disproved thanks to a journalist's hard work. They showed that it was wrong, that it was false. Distribute, verb. Remember circulation? Well, distribute is much like it. People were distributing free newspapers at the station. They're giving them out. They were circulating them. They were distributing the newspapers at the station. People were distributing. Yeah, it's a way to circulate something, is to distribute it among as many people as possible. Ditch as a verb. The teenagers always ditch school to play video games. Ditch means abandon, leave, uh, don't go, skip, uh, take off, be absent, uh, leave early. We say ditch. It's a good verb. It's kind of a kind of a uh, slang word ditch as a verb leave early or don't go or leave don't show up don't tell somebody where you are ditch yes sometimes teenagers ditch school to play video games yeah leave and don't come back you are gone you are gone of course video games are more important than school no not really uh, but I think that's how teenagers feel most of the time. Boy, just not teenagers these days, but adults too. Adults play video games, and they're quite addictive. People play them compulsively. And so sometimes they ditch work or school or their friends or family to play video games. Exhaustion. Exhaustion. Noun. He works too hard at his job and often suffers from mental exhaustion, mental exhaustion, out of energy, wiped out, no more left, no more energy, no more power, exhaustion as a noun, exhaustion. Fad as a noun, fad. I'm not going to buy one of those because I think it is just a fad. Nobody will, will be using them in a few months. And here we see a picture. It looks like uh, Google glasses or internet-capable glasses with, with a camera built in. And, of course, these became a fad. Uh, they did not become popular. Only a few people had them for a short amount of time. It is a fad. It did not become something popular. It at one time, maybe for a short while, it became very popular, but it was just a fad. I guess recently we can also say uh, Pokemon Go, uh, the app, the phone app, was a fad. It was very popular for a short amount of time, and then people stopped paying attention to it. It was a fashion, yeah, short-term fashion, opposite of a trend. Short-term trend does not last a long time. Okay. Ooh, speaking of exhaustion, I'm a little exhausted from going through so many words so fast. I'm sorry I couldn't include all your great synonyms and example sentences, but these class notes are shared with you, and there are some questions at the end. So go through these words, study these words, try those questions at the end of the class notes. I'll share the link with you one more time. Yeah, our, good, Hassam. Uh, R.I.P., rest in peace, dab. The dance fad, the dab, is done. It's gone. The dab was a fad because Hillary Clinton dabbed on the Ellen Show. All right, I'm going to include that sentence. Uh, in America, Pokemon Go turned out to be a fad. It was played by many, many people. And now, not so many people. Some people still play it, but not as many. It was crazy how many people played it at the beginning as opposed to now. The number of people playing Pokemon Go decreased quite a bit. There was a decline in players. 
So we'll use that. I like that uh, example sentence, Usam. The dab was a fad because Hillary Clinton dabbed on the Ellen show. That's for sure. Oh, yeah, I should tell you your... Again, for the subscribers, there is homework. And it's vocabulary five, and it's all three exercises uh, for this vocabulary. Exercises one, two, and three. So three different exercises, which you can find on the SMART page. So please do those. For those subscribing students, and for the rest of the students, for all students, uh, it was a pleasure going through vocabulary with you today. Uh, you thought of many excellent examples, synonyms, and sentences. Of course, we didn't get through them all, so review those on the class notes, the ones we did not get to. And good luck studying and have fun and always learn new words to increase your vocabulary. I, ha I know, so many words, so many words to study. But you have time. You have, it's Wednesday. You have all through Thursday and Friday and the weekend. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I'll see you all later. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Make sure to tune in to Mark's class and all the other great YouTube classes. And I will talk to you soon. All right, bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.